Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about the final Smackdown before Wrestlemania tomorrow. Jesus Christ, Wrestlemania is tomorrow. Oh boy, I probably got to be up really early for that one, holy cow. Oh man, it's been a long week already, man. It's been a, it's been a crazy week. So, let's talk about SmackDown, shall we? Not a lot happened on this show. Way too many segments. There were there were a lot more segments than matches. There were about three matches. Two of them were the two uh, hyped up matches. The Andre the Giant Memorial and the four-way for the tag team titles. Oh, look at that. The freaking cable came out. Of course it did. So, Daniel Bryan declared a defiant yes for his WrestleMania dreams. You know, I am not convinced Daniel Bryan is going to win. I'm fully expecting Edge to win. I just got that funny feeling Edge is winning to Edge is going to be winning. And yeah. That's really all i got to say. Daniel Bryan, he cuts one hell of a promo. He's a great ass promo. Daniel Bryan is always great when it comes to his promos. Then we had the four-way match. And everybody was predicting new champions. And I guess WWE saw a lot of us predicting we were going to be having new champions. And this is probably what's the goodness of wrestling. And I actually want to dive into that pretty soon, actually. And they went with the uh, thing that nobody expected. And that was Rude and Ziggler retaining. And they retained via stealing the win. And being true heels. That is what Ziggler and Rude were. They were being true heels here. Montez Ford hit the uh, cash out. The frog splash and Rude would tag himself in. Ziggler would super kick forward in the face and Rude would go in the ring for the pin, stealing the win and retaining the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. I like how they stole the win actually because it shows them that they are dirty dogs, as they call themselves. They are the dirty dogs and they were and they were indeed dirty dogs on this night, taking the dirty win. We had Tamina and Natalia. No, Tamina and Natalia. Tamina and Nia Jax. Excuse me. It was the Battle of the Powerhouses. And Tamina won by disqualification. Shayna Baszler got involved. And also we had more backstage segments with with more of the women's tag teams. And they had Billy Kay and Carmella back there as well. Carmella and Billy Kay are now officially a tag team. Good. I actually wanted them to be a tag team. I didn't, I don't mind Billy and uh, Mella as a team. I like the Billy and Mella team more than the Peyton Evans team. I don't know if Billy and Carmella are baby faces. I can't really tell. I can't really tell if they are. Yes, Carmella did the whole Carmella is money, the Mella is money thing cuz you know, that's her old phrase. That's her old phrase. And, and, and I wish they go back to her old character. I'm not a fan of this champagne drinking Carmella. I'm not a big fan of that one. I'm not a fan of the champagne drinking Carmella. So Billy and Carmella are now added to the tag team turmoil at WrestleMania. Do I think Carmella and Billy Kay are going to win? <laughs> Absolutely not. When do, when do WWE ever let Australians win? The only time they let Australians win was the one time the Iconics won the tag team titles at WrestleMania, and the other time when they had the Iconics and Murphy win in our home country. That is literally the only time they ever allow our Australians to win. It's the only time. So Mella 
and Kay are not winning. I'm fully expecting Lana and Naomi because Lana and Naomi have been feuding with Shayna and Nia like forever. Especially Lana. She's been feuding with them since forever. And I just feel like it just makes a total sense for Lana and Naomi to win and win the titles. I feel like they're going to eventually win the titles. I can't see Riot Squad winning because they've been on a losing streak. They've been on a losing streak. How can two teams that have been on a... How can a team be on a losing streak and all of a sudden tag team champions? That doesn't make sense to me. They're having Natalia and Tamina look the most strongest in this whole build up to the turmoil. So Natalia and, and Tamina are definitely not winning because they've been building them up quite a lot to make them look like a dominant team. So I'm I want Billy Kay and Carmella, but I think it will be Lana and Naomi. But I know for a fact it won't be Billy and Carmella. And my second my, my other option would be Mandy and Dana. That'd be another option I'd go for. Edge he cut a long ass promo. Almost made me fall asleep. Seriously, Edge's promos. Look, he may still have it. He may, he still may cut good promos, but good freaking God, that guy felt like he was about to put me to sleep. Having a whinge continuously, still sucking about how Daniel Bryan took his opportunity. Wah, 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 Edge. You took the opportunity from, from 29 other men in a Royal Rumble. You're, you, my friend... Whether people agree with it or not, you, Mr. Adam Copeland, are a nostalgia act. Someone from the past coming out of retirement to relive his former glory. That's a nostalgia act. Coming out of retirement and reliving your old glory. I talked about that in my WrestleMania 32 review with the Dudley Boys. Your sole purpose as a, as a, as a nostalgia act is to come back and help the future of WWE and I can't stand that they're trying to make Edge feel like he can be relevant in the main event scene that 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 I can't stand how WWE wants Edge to just you know be in the main event scene what do you do with him when he loses the Universal Championship do you have him put over younger talent he should be doing that right now he shouldn't be focusing on becoming Universal Champion Oh, it's all about the comeback story, though, Pat. It's all about the comeback story. Jeff Hardy, he had one. He had a comeback story, yeah. And uh, yeah, and look what happened to Jeff Hardy. Everyone's bitching about Jeff Hardy. He had his little comeback moment. When he won the Intercontinental Championship, that didn't last long. And now you got fans complaining about Jeff Hardy. Oh, Jeff Hardy deserves better. you got people complaining about how Jeff Hardy deserves better. Seriously. Jeff Hardy is a nostalgia act and he should be helping the future, but yet you got people saying Jeff Hardy deserves better. Jeff Hardy deserves championships. Jeff Hardy doesn't deserve championships and neither does Edge. Listen, I liked Jeff Hardy back in the day, but not anymore. We're, 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 we're past the old age. We are past the people that just want to come back and relive their old glory. I'm just over that. I'm done with that. It's time to focus on the, on the future. But no. We need people like Edge coming out of retirement and hoping and wanting a Universal Championship match. Oh, but what about Daniel? What, what, what about Daniel Bryan, Patrick? He came out of retirement. Well, you know what's funny? Well, you, well, you, know, what, well, you know what the big difference between Daniel Bryan and Edge? Daniel Bryan is still in his freaking prime. Daniel is in his prime. Still in his prime. Edge is not in his prime. And no, you can't tell me, oh yes, he is in his prime. He's not in his prime. He's in his 40s. The guy's in his 40s and you're going to tell me his 40s is his prime? His prime was 2005-2006. That was Edge's prime. Edge is nowhere near, nowhere near as good as he used to be. So please, cut the crap about Edge being still in his prime. He's nowhere near his prime. 
Not even close. Not even close. So yes, Edge's promo was boring and it almost put me to sleep. They showed Sami Zayn's uh, segment with Logan Paul. Seriously, does anybody give a shit about Logan Paul? I sure as hell don't. And then Sami gets enraged by WWE showing what happened to him when he went to Logan Paul's training facility. So he got mad. Kevin Owens attacked him. This is when the Battle Royal was about to begin. And that's it. Kevin Owens came out and attacked Sami. So I guess Sami Zayn is winning at WrestleMania. Because Kevin Owens, you know, got him on the final show. Also, Sasha and Bianca, they both had segments. They were both talking about their match being the main event. And it's officially confirmed they are the main event of night one. As they should be. As they should be. Bianca Belair won the freaking Royal Rumble, so of course she should main event. A lot of people tell me, oh, the build is bad. The build is bad. Because the build is so bad, they shouldn't main event. Seriously, you could seriously you could have Roman Reigns take a shit in the bathroom and they'll still make him the main event of WrestleMania. It's not about the build. Maybe it can be. At times, if you want to get people invested and excited in the match. But they but Bianca won the Royal Rumble match. Winning the Royal Rumble match guarantees you a main event match at WrestleMania. The people that did not want Sasha and Bianca main eventing wanted the Royal Rumble tarnished and meant nothing. That is what I got from the people that didn't want them the main event. Because you wanted the Royal Rumble to mean nothing. The Royal Rumble is supposed to lead to people main eventing the pay-per-view. Oh, but no. That's not... But no. No, 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 no. Their build was shit. They shouldn't main event. So was Lashley and Drew's. Lashley and Drew's build was all about taking out Drew McIntyre. Oh, wow. So WrestleMania main event worthy. Whoever takes out Drew McIntyre can get can get a WWE title match. Yeah, that's so main event worthy. Sasha and Bianca should be main eventing regardless how terrible their feud is or how terrible their bu their feud their build is. Because Bianca won the Royal Rumble, she earned the right to main event. So get over it. And that's the problem with today's wrestling community. They just refuse. They're just never happy. People are just never happy. They want new stars build. They complain. And I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet today from a fan. And I can't believe. I can't believe this person have that as an opinion. Now it's okay to have an opinion. But good freaking God, Bianca's only been around on the main roster for a year. And I saw a person make a tweet. About, about, and he called Bianca's rise to the top fake. Just like her hair. He said, just like her hair, her rise to the top is fake. And he called Bianca Belair WWE's new golden girl. Their golden girl still exists. Her name is Charlotte Flair. Imagine having that as an opinion. Oh, Bianca Belair is 
is their new golden girl. Were you one of the people? Were you one of the people that wanted WWE to push Bianca Belair? If you're a person that wanted Bianca Belair pushed, and then all of a sudden you turn around and say something like that, that just proves my point about fans. They're just never satisfied. They're just never happy with absolutely anything that they are given. And that's the problem with today's wrestling fans. I feel like today's wrestling fans have completely ruined what made wrestling so special. Wrestling is something we're supposed to enjoy. We're supposed to sit down and watch and enjoy for our entertainment. They put their bodies on the line for our entertainment. But all but no but but today's community, they don't give a shit about these people putting their bodies on the line for us. All they care about is is oh what's going on backstage? Well what, what what's Vince Man doing? Oh let's go on to the to the newsletter. Let's go on to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and let's find out what's what's going on behind backstage, what's going on behind the scenes. People today, all oh, that's all they care about. What's going on behind the scenes? Who gives a shit what goes on behind the scenes? We are, we are fans. We are fans. We're supposed to be watching this shit. We're supposed to be watching this and enjoying it for what it's supposed to be. Wrestling! And we are fans. And we are fans. We're supposed to be sitting down and watching it. Supporting our favourites. God, I miss the... God, I miss the old days. Good freaking God. I, God, I miss the... God, freak, good freaking God, I miss the old days. When, when watching stuff was fun back then. Sometimes I feel like revisiting stuff from the past. Because the stuff that I used to watch back in the day was actually really good. I didn't enjoy some things, yes. But at least back in the day... I didn't have to listen to friggin' people constantly complain about how terrible it is. Social media has ruined wrestling. It has. Social media has ruined it. You may not agree with that, but I personally believe social media has completely killed what made wrestling so special. Because nowadays it's all about politics, what's going on backstage. Oh, let's find out what Vincent Mann's up to. It's all about that nowadays. Critiquing the shows. It's okay to critique. It's okay to say if you like something or if you don't like something. That's fine. But understand this. We're, we're, not, we're not here to find out what the hell does Vince McMahon want to do back behind the scenes. Do you think he cares? Do you think he cares? Do you think he cares what we want? And you know what's funny? He does. And you know what's funny? He has given us what we want every now and then. Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, Kofi Kingston, Drew McIntyre. New stars built, built. He's done that. And we all complain. We all complain. Because we are never satisfied. That's why wrestling today is at, it, is at the level it is today. Because fans are just never satisfied with anything that Vince McMahon gives us. You may not agree with that. But that's my opinion. About wrestling. And why I think it's been ruined. I could have just made it its own video, but hey, I've already got an, uh, I've already got a solo video planned already. So then we had the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Now I didn't expect Murphy to win this. I knew he was never going to win. And the one person that I, and, and the one person that I. Freaking knew was going to eliminate him. Actually freaking eliminated him. Baron Corbin. Screw you. I freaking predicted when I was watching when I was watching this. 
I was like, what's the bet? Bloody Baron Corbin eliminates him. And freaking Baron Corbin eliminates Murphy. Of course he did. Of course he did, because Vincent because Vincent Mann wants to have his wants to have his bald headed boy be better and then the than the Australian. I should boycott WWE. <laughs> I should boycott WWE because they won't let Murphy win anything. So, see how silly that sounds? But Jay Uso won the Battle Royal. Now, I expected either Jay or Nakamura when I first saw the lineup. I was like, well, the only ones that I see logically winning are Nakamura and Jay Uso. I didn't really consider Murphy as a winner because I knew he wasn't winning. So Nakamura and Jay to me were the only ones that I considered good real real winners. And Jay Uso was the winner. He won the Andre the Giant Memorial. Congratulations, Jay, you won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and it's good and it's going to lead you to absolutely nothing. Nothing. Because the people that win these battle royals, they never get anything for it. All they get is a big ass trophy. Oh, here you go. Here's a, a big Andre the Giant trophy. That's your reward. Why can't the winner get a title shot? Why not? But no, that's, that makes too much sense. So Roman Reigns ended the show with his promo. He said what he had to say. I'm not going to re 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 reword everything he said because I'm not like certain. I'm not like a certain podcaster who would actually, you know, copy and paste literally everything, write, read the entire dialogue, and go over the rest holds. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not going to waste your time. You watched the damn show. You know what happened, and you knew what, and you know what the wrestlers said. If you didn't, if you didn't watch it, and if you didn't hear what they said, or how the matches went down, pluck your ass down, go on their YouTube page, and watch it. That's my advice. So there you have it guys, that was the final SmackDown before WrestleMania tomorrow and Man, I'm excited and nervous at the same time for WrestleMania. I really hope Sasha Banks wins. I doubt she does. So thank you all for joining me. If you guys did enjoy, hit that thumbs up. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. And I will see you all tomorrow for WrestleMania. Mania.